Number 106. Draw the Lewis structures and predict the shape of each compound or ion. And then we have the ion, SO3 2 minus. It's an ion because I do see a charge in the upper right hand corner. Now a two negative just means that in order for this molecule to work, right, and to become an ion and to get the octet rule, um, something had to happen where you had to gain two electrons. So the negative two always means that you're more negative than positive, and in order to get more negative, you always gain electrons, because electrons are positive. Sorry, electrons are negative. <laughs> okay, so we got to draw the Lewis structure of SO3 2 minus and predict the shape. Now when they say predict the shape, basically what we have to do is we have to find the molecular geometry or the molecular structure. I like to use the term molecular geometry, but it's the same exact thing. But in order to find the molecular geometry, you always got to get that Lewis structure first. So before we use this chart, which is all of your molecular geometries, let's draw the Lewis structure. Now, in order to start drawing a Lewis structure, the least electronegative element always goes in the middle as a central atom. So between sulfur and oxygen, they are both in the same group. And as you go down a group, your electronegativity will decrease. So that means that sulfur is a little bit less electronegative than oxygen. So sulfur in the middle, surrounded by the three oxygens. So maybe we'll do one, two, and three. Um, oh boy. Okay, that's, that's good enough for now. And now let's put our valence electrons. Now in this case, they're in the same group, so they have the same number of valence electrons, group 6A or 16, but the lucky number is 6. So for sulfur, you got 6 valence electrons, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for each oxygen, you also got 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Oop, 5, 6, and then you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then you got 1, 2, 3, four, five, six. Now you have to gain those two electrons. And whenever you're gaining electrons, generally speaking, the more electronegative element is the one that gains the electrons. Negative or electronegative element. But you just got to be fair, right? One is not going to take the two of them. One element the more electronegative element is going to gain one, and then another electronegative element will gain the other one. So maybe I'll put one dot here to gain one, and I'll put the other dot on the oxygen on the other side. And now, single bond it up, always put single bonds, which is dot to dot, and just make sure that you have the octet. Only for ones that don't have the octet, then you got to just double up. But for these, right, this oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons. This oxygen has two, four, six, eight electrons. So that's all good. This oxygen needs a little help. Two, four, six, seven. It's looking at this one. It's like, hey, can we share, please? Um, and the sulfur kindly says, of course we can share. So the sulfur says, sharing is caring. Um, so the oxygen gains that one bond. And now it's got the octet. Sulfur has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons, a little bit more than the octet, but that's totally fine because sulfur is in period three. Remember, once you start getting down on the periodic table, sulfur, chlorine, iodine, if those elements are in the center, it can have more uh, than eight electrons. Max of, t max of 12, so 10 is all good. And I'm just going to pull this down a little bit. And now since we had a charge, we just have to clearly state that we did gain two electrons. So we just put this bracket here and say two minus. Now the Lewis structure is 100% perfect. Now we're going to use this chart to basically find the shape. And the molecular geometry or the shape always comes from the central atom. So once again, we are looking at sulfur. Now. In order to use this chart, which you might have to memorize, depending on if your teacher or professor is not going to give you this information on a test or quiz, 
but you just have to basically know how many total atoms and how many total lone pairs are around that central atom. So in this case, we'll highlight the sulfur, because that's who's in question here. And how many atoms is around the sulfur? Well, all three of these oxygens, right? One, two, three. They all have a direct bond to the central atom, the sulfur. So we got three atoms. And now how many lone pairs around the sulfur? Well, you got one lone pair, right? You got two dots. That's one lone pair. Nobody cares about any of these because they're not the sulfur. You only care about the central. So you got three atoms and one lone pair. Now, in order to find out whether you're two to six, you take the three and you take the one and you add them together. So now we're in four land. So I know that I'm over here, but there's three options, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramid, or trigonal pyramidal, or bent. Nobody really says angular. And that comes from the total number of lone pairs. But we said that it was one lone pair, so we just call it where they meet. So this would be classified as trigonal pyramid. Uh, when I was learning it, I learned it as trigonal pyramidal. Um, so you might have that. Just know that trigonal pyramid and trigonal pyramidal, they're exactly the same, so it doesn't really matter. And in terms of bond angles, since you have a lone pair, lone pairs are always going to push your bonds closer together by a little bit. And that's why these bond angles are a little bit less than 109, or maybe your teacher professor might want you to know as 109.5, which is the one that I had to memorize. Why do they always make it so harder? Right? So much harder. <laughs> but anyway, so I think uh, the actual number is 107.5 light FM. <laughs> 107.5 light FM. Um, but maybe I think it's 107, but just what, you know, less than 109. But anyway, that's the answer. Trigonal pyramidal, trigonal pyramid is the shape, and we have the Lewis structure of this lovely ion, and we are done. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video and for being so supportive of this channel. This channel would literally not be here without you guys. Thank you for making it um, successful, and you know, <laughs> thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, please tell your friends, tell your classmates about this channel. Maybe we could help them as well. And it's just crazy how far this channel has gone, you know, throughout the world. And we love that we can help everybody, you know, around, around the world. So thank you so, so, so much. Keep studying, always keep learning and good luck on your tests and quizzes, not just in chem, but anything that you're taking history, you know, whether you're taking world history, U S history, a foreign language, Italian, Spanish, thank you. And I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye-bye.